ist ein Kronjuwel. Wie heißt du, mein Engel? Jamila. Jamila, die Schöne. The young woman won't be the only one. In his memoirs, Oppenheim boasts that none of his temporary wives ever rejected him, even though they had the right to do so, and that the best way to learn Arabic was in bed. But this passionate admirer of the Middle East is also a German patriot. He has first-hand knowledge of the Muslim world and offers his services to his government. In 1896, Oppenheim secures a position with the German Foreign Office in Cairo. His job is described as systematic observer of the Islamic world. Oppenheim collects information on the Egyptian resistance against the British occupation. He sends regular reports to Berlin. The British in Cairo soon call him the Kaiser spy. The two powers, the British and German empires, also compete in the field of science. Oppenheim participates in an archaeological race to discover ancient sites. He excavates a 3,000-year-old palace, which he finds purely by chance. In 1912, Oppenheim visits a group of British archaeologists who are working on a dig a few days from Cairo. Until this point, the Germans had only ever interpreted other people's discoveries. Now, they're in the desert themselves, in competition with the British. Oppenheim meets a young and gaunt archaeologist called Thomas Edward Lawrence. As a 21-year-old, the talented Oxford graduate has traveled the Middle East on his own initiative. He is a like-minded enthusiast. With a touch of irony, Lawrence later describes his meeting with the Baron from Cologne, who was 30 years his senior. But he has respect for him, both as archaeologist and as author of an admirable book on the Bedouins. Both are fascinated by the Orient and have chosen careers that allow them to live in Arabia. The two men cannot foresee that they will soon be sworn enemies and that they will both try to win the war in the Middle East for their respective nations. In August 1914, the First World War breaks out. The Kaiser has isolated Germany and Europe. France, Britain, and Russia have formed an alliance against the German Empire. Despite this, a sense of confidence remains. The enemy has attacked us at a time of peace. We must take up arms. Any indecision or hesitation would be a betrayal of the fatherland. The Germans devise the Schlieffen plan. Its aim is to defeat the French quickly and then concentrate on the fight against Russia. But at the Battle of the Marne, the German advance grinds to a halt. After only a few weeks, the army gets stuck in the trenches. Even the optimists in the army's high command realize that this will be a long and protracted war, and that it could easily exhaust Germany's resources. But the Kaiser is convinced that he has another ace to play. Wilhelm regards the English as a nation of unscrupulous shopkeepers. He will encourage the Muslim world to rebel against Britain. The German Empire was not prepared for the war on two fronts that it was now facing, but the Germans thought they saw a way out by opening up a third front in the Middle East, meaning they hoped to win the war with the help of millions of Muslims. Max von Oppenheim shares the Kaiser's view. Working directly for the Foreign Office in Berlin, he drafts a strategy paper that is based on his long-held beliefs. Absatz. In erster Linie haben wir gegenwärtig... He writes... First and foremost, we have to think about strengthening the forces of Islam and about how to use them for our self-defense. The perfidiousness of our enemies entitles us to use whatever means are available. Oppenheim's concept, if the Muslims rebel in the colonies, Britain and France will be forced to redeploy troops from the European front. England ein furchtbarer Schlag. Tun wir alles. 
Islam's intervention in the current war would be a terrible blow for the English. Let's do whatever we can to ensure that this blow will be fatal. Oppenheim's 